In this episode, we're going to be adding Apple CarPlay or Android Auto into our 2015 Silverado 2500 HD. Our truck has a nice stereo, but it did not come with the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto built in. Unfortunately, they didn't start adding that until 2016 or some of the late model 2015s. So the options for me is I can either spend like $1,000 and get everything reprogrammed, send it in, and then I'll add it, or I can add my own custom stereo. Here is the component overview I'm showing you. We are adding uh, iData Link Maestro. This is really cool. This will actually allow me to read engine codes while I'm driving. It'll put a uh, display up on the screen here. It'll show things like engine RPM and check engine codes and all that stuff. This is the GM module. This basically comes with everything you need to connect it to an actual GM car or GM truck. This is the actual data link module. This is what uh, connects into this. This is an audio video bypass. This will allow me to use the screen even when I'm driving. Obviously be safe when you use this. This is an antenna adapter because the GM uses a special antenna so this will allow it to adapt into a Pioneer stereo for me. We need a dash kit. This one right here will accept a double DIN or a single DIN, depending on how you configure it. And of course, you're going to need a stereo. I'm choosing to go Pioneer in this route. You can choose whatever one you want. Make sure it specifically says it on the side here. CarPlay Android Auto. So this is the component overview. Next up, we're going to be showing how I connect my GM module to my wiring harness. This is going to be the easiest thing you do all day long. Opening up this box, this is what you see. We're going to break it down. Very simple. This is to allow you to use your stock backup camera if you have one installed. This is the OBD uh, port. It plugs in. It allows you to read the engine code and live data on your screen. Uh, as well as this will plug into underneath the steering column. It allows you to use your steering wheel controls if you have those. This is a speaker. Uh, known as the chime and then this is what plugs into the truck and we will be soldering into uh, the new stereo with this this also has a few d uh, adapters to let everything basically work well together inside the truck this is all really simple we're gonna go over it and how we install everything so in your stereo this should have given you a wiring harness it'll look something like this for the most part the wires are not going to be labeled as to what they go to but luckily, for the most part, it's going to be just matching wires with the same colors. We're going to be going through each one. There's a few things we're going to be adding because we're adding in this uh, in-motion adapter to allow us to use the stereo while we're driving. And I personally like soldering all my connections. This isn't necessary. I think it gets a better connection versus a crimp connection. But do whatever you'd like. I'm going to be showing just uh, one wire, my process of how I solder this. And I'm using these helping hands. You can get, get these for super cheap. They basically just hold your wires in place. So I've got my uh, helping hands here, basically holding this in place. And then as an added bonus, I'm adding this shrink tube. It gives a nice tight seal. So what I do when I'm getting ready to solder, I get my helping hands to kind of line this up. So I kind of get them spread out a little bit, just enough so they'll twist into each other. Kind of like that. Now you plug in your, your soldering iron and we're going to apply just a little bit of solder to it. So I'm not super amazing at soldering. However, I know a few things. Use flux. It basically clean, keeps your metals nice and clean. It's always best to kind of heat underneath and let the solder flow into what you're working. And now you can see the solder's flowing into the wires themselves. That's all it takes. So now I'm just going to slide my heat shrink tubing over. I'm only going to show that one, my method of soldering. I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest. And then when I'm done, I'm going to show you how uh, all the colors relate, what they do, and uh, we'll kind of review that. So I got my wiring harness all complete here. So we have this dark green and black stripe. 
that's one of your speakers. We have white, solid white, and white with the black stripe. That's also a speaker. We have two purples, dark purples. Again, solid, one with a black stripe. That's a speaker. Now, don't confuse that. We do have a purple with a white stripe. We'll get to that in a second. And then our last speaker is gray, solid gray, and then gray with a black stripe. That's also a speaker. So already that's almost half that are just speakers. Those are easy to figure out. Your red is going to be a 12 volt switched. So this won't always have power. It's only going to be when the car or the ignition is on. Yellow is going to be a constant 12 volt. So all the time, even when the truck's off, that's going to be having 12 volt supply too. And that's why it's a little bit thicker because that gives the main power. Black is going to be your ground. We have this purple with white, and that is the reverse. So when you put your truck into reverse, this is what tells the stereo to turn on your backup camera. Okay, we have this blue with a white stripe, and that tells the amp, the factory amp, to kick on. It also goes to our in motion video bypass and you can see how that's wired together. We've got this solid yellow with a black stripe and that's a mute signal and to be perfectly honest I'm not sure what it's used for. This is the first time I've ever actually used a wiring harness that included that wire so I don't think it's really necessary. We've got this kind of light green wire and this it goes to your parking brake. Typically and it goes to the parking brake sensor so the stereo knows when your parking brake is on so it'll allow you to use your stereo basically. Now in my case we're using the video bypass so that's where we, we wire that to. And last but not least this orange with a white stripe. This is a dimmer switch. Basically when you turn your lights on or turn your lights off the stereo will either dim or brighten and that's all of them. On the GM wiring side, so these are coming off the GM module, not the stereo, but we aren't going to use these. I'm going to show you quickly how we set up our dash kit to accept this double DIN. Because this kit can be used on multiple applications, there's a few things you have to modify to make it fit yours. In this case, we're going to be putting in a double din or a full size radio some people may call it so we need to cut off this little bracket here cut it flush in that corner cut that flush in that corner and then these are the brackets that actually mount to the side of your stereo and we have to just snap off these tabs that protrude like that you can see last thing we have to do is uh, snap off this little side piece basically acts as a spacer and these two holes here line up with these two holes there once you have your brackets put together this will basically slide in like that and it's got little teeth on there so it should hold itself in for the most part now it's time to grab your actual stereo and we're going to lower it onto it and uh, start looking at mounting it. And uh, I probably won't be able to show this on camera, but from your kit you should have some screws to mount everything up. Here's the final product as it's installed. So before we move on to dismantling the dash and getting that stereo out, we're going to start working on some of our connections we have to make for the data link. We've got this little bolt here and that one right there. These are T15. We're going to take that off next. It's just going to kind of pull this piece towards us. Bum, bum. 
So I needed both hands, but basically you have some clips in there. So just by pulling back, that will release. And now that allows us to get access underneath here. We have to pull this off as well. This is just from friction. And now we're basically going to squeeze this column. There's no fasteners on it, just like that. And squeeze the other side as well, and that'll pop off. And now we've got access to our clock spring. Okay, open up your GM3 kit. Find this piece right here. So we've got this that'll plug into our OBD port, and then we've got these two wiring harnesses. And you can see this one right here, that needs to unplug. Basically, this is a Y adapter, allows us to plug that in. So basically, you just have to, there's a little indent, push that in, that pops out. I've installed my Y piece here. I have not been able to find anything in the instructions as to what this is supposed to go to. And Google didn't show anything either. So for now, I'm going to leave it disconnected. And then we're going to take our OBD now and route this through this channel. The other end of this, we're just going to feed up through here and leave enough slack so we can grab it when we install the stereo. Next thing we're going to tackle is taking out basically this center stack. I usually just take like a plastic putty knife or if you have a body trim tool, something that's plastic that's not going to scratch your bezel at all. Just very gently get your pry tool in there. Okay, if you've got heated seats, you can just connect these little connectors there. So to remove your actual stereo now, we've got four screws holding it in. These are seven millimeters. Now the stereo should slide out. A couple electrical connections on the back here. We can just disconnect. And the old one's out. So when you get our HVAC module out of here, so if you flip this over on the back here, there's just a handful of tabs. They're plastic. Pry those off, and this whole module will just pop out like that. We're going to be transferring this onto our new bezel. We're just going to start removing everything else. We've got just a single connector back here. Remove that. Set that CD aside. We won't be reusing it. Now we have these connectors. This is your OnStar unit. And then a couple antennas. Like so. Set that aside. We'll be needing that later. Now we have the factory radio and a couple plugs on it. Another couple antennas. And this will unclip from the top. Just like that. So as you can see inside here, this cavity, in order to get our new doubled in radio in here, we're going to have to cut these support bars, cut out this bottom piece because this is where we're going to be pushing the OnStar module. Okay, so we're done modifying. I didn't film this because I was experimenting on the best method to cut this out. Ultimately what I did was just take my Sawzall with a metal blade, kind of low RPM, and just kind of sheared this off on each side. Be super careful because we've got a ton of wires going through here. And once I had that pretty much off, I was able to just bend this down and start snapping it. And then I just took some wire cutters in certain areas. Just kind of cut, cut, cut. 
bent snap off and then I basically did the same thing down here I took my sawzall did a horizontal cut right there cut 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 snap 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 and now it fits quite nicely in there time to start putting everything back together so this is to the CD player we won't be needing it so we're just gonna be tucking it out of the way we're gonna take our OnStar module and it'll now sit snugly back there don't forget your antenna this is the antenna that will not adapt to the back of a normal stereo so we had to buy this adapter kit this will just plug in like so this is the uh, satellite antenna I'm not going to be using the satellite radio on uh, my system so I can just tuck that away if you want to use it there are adapters to adapt that now we can start making some of our connections here so this is our wiring harness from our kit and it's just going to plug in like that. We've got this one right here. That'll plug in just like that. This is what'll plug into the back of the stereo. This is going to go to our backup camera. We'll be showing that in just a few minutes. And then all of these are connections that go to the uh, actual data link of the Maestro module. So my truck has a backup camera and we want to make sure that works with the new stereo. So to access, to get the adapter in, there's four screws. One right there, one right there, one right there, and then one right there. These are all the same Torx screws. So take these out and that glove box will pop right out. So as we look into the glove box here, we have a couple of different connections here. That gray one, that very far left one, is the one that we need to disconnect and plug in our adapter. This is the adapter from the kit. I won't be able to show it on camera making this connection, but it's simple enough. You just unplug it from the module, plug this end in, and then you're going to feed this up to our stereo up through that channel the last thing we need to add before we can start putting everything back together is this chime module so most people will choose to mount it underneath plastic somewhere in there but find a good place to put it route your cable your end here up through the bottom wherever you decide to mount and up through the top we get to actually start plugging things in and seeing how they work. So a lot of this stuff, especially on the right side, is just not going to be used. This was like a little USB port. We have this connection here, this connection. That is all not used, so we can just kind of tuck this into one of the pockets here. And everything's going to be color coordinated going into the Maestro. This is our chime module. this black pin here, this three pin over here, We've got a green pin, grab this from your RR kit, this is basically the data cable, allows everything to work together, and this is a four pin black goes right next to the USB pin like that we've also got a another one here it's a 3.5 to 3 pin I'm going to take a lot of these cables and just kind of tuck them out of the way so I can get access to my stereo 
to connect in our driver side pin. Now it goes underneath the dash. That clicks in like that. We have our climate control pin. That's going to plug in like so. Just like that. And then this will plug into the back of our HVAC control when we install that. Okay, I think we're in a position we can start plugging everything in. This is our USB. This will allow uh, the Android Auto to actually play. So make sure you run this. I'm just running it straight down into my floorboard. So I've got my backup camera here, climate control here, USB. I'm just going to take my Maestro module and kind of stick it down out of the way there. This is my microphone. Here I have your actual stereo that's now mounted in there and start plugging away. So we're about to turn this on for the very first time. We can hear our chimes working. Okay, we can start listening to our stereo. Okay, we can see that that's working. So here's a demo of the Android Auto actually working. Once you plug it in, usually by default, we'll go into your map settings. I'll show you that here. You can search destinations, you can type in addresses, and you'll do it all from your front screen. I won't spend a lot of time showing the features of Android Auto, because if you've looked into this, and likely you already know what it's capable of. But you can have your music playing apps here, nice album art. But the great thing about this system is we installed the data link to it. So if you go to your categories button, and click this, you can go into your car features. And this is where it'll show all of your gauges, RPMs. You can set custom profiles, so if you have a towing profile that you wanna look, RPM, load. You can set all of these gauges to be custom. You can even set Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> Are you trying to mess up Dad's filming? Yeah. You also have just uh, your TPMS sensor Daddy, here. Daddy. If you have an engine light on, you can also check it from there. This is going to show our voltage. Um, of course, all of these have different settings you can play with. Here's your climate information. Basically, it mirrors the factory setup. If you happen to have the proximity alerts, they will show up here. So overall, this was a pretty easy install. It took a while just because you want to make sure you do things right. You can update the firmware on the Maestro and the data link. So if they add more features or maybe something becomes... Uh, updated in the future you can do that um, shout out to my buddy Dan Dan's a big supporter of the channel and was one of the reasons why I ended up making this video because he has a similar truck to mine one more thing to keep in mind depending on what stereo you buy may unlock different or additional features uh, with the data link and as always thanks for watching the video thanks for supporting the channel and we'll see you next time Daddy.